All right, it looks like the stream is settled in. So you know the routine, I'm gonna go ahead and press. I don't, I don't wait. It's a recorded video. You can, you can go back and watch the first couple minutes. So appreciate you guys being here now or later. Um, three things, three things. Magic muzzle, a magic muzzle, tanker monkey, Paul Vines, Jeff Senior, Michael Klein, tanker monkey, I saw you called last night. Man, it's been busy. I will try to touch base with you tonight. I'll be taking off. I'm stopping for fuel and getting my, my collagen coffees now, but I'll, I'll reach out to you. But those three things, magic muzzles, my gear shift fell off, just fell off while I'm going down the road. That was yesterday. It blew my whole day. And then, uh, great, more great news, more great news, more great news. Let's start with, let's start with the gear shift. Let me start with that because it, the whole day. The whole day I'm going down the road I'm in a 13 speed uh, um, what is the non-def what's the name I'm, why can't I think of the name of the non-def truck glider kit I'm in, I'm in a 13 speed glider kit I love it I love it but yesterday I'm coming down the road and the gear shift like it literally and, and tanker monkey will know this Chris Gagnon Firebird I'm doing my shifting and all of a sudden the shifter, the shifter knob just is going up and down in all directions. It's not getting any traction. I could just disconnect it from the transmission. And I'm doing 65 miles an hour. <laughs> so I pulled over. Luckily I was someplace where there was a shoulder. Luckily there was a shoulder that I could pull into because I mean I had no power from that point on because I lost the transmission. And uh so I pulled over. We have our own company. We have a company within a company who, what did I do with my, there it is. We have a company within a company, within our company, that we have our own internal service truck, trucks. So I called, I said, listen, I'm on the side of the road. My transmission, I thought the transmission just dropped out. I've never been in a vehicle where the transmission did this before. So I was virgin territory. I needed to have a cigarette once I was done with all this yesterday. But uh, I thought the transmission just dropped out. What happened was the shifter knob just disconnected from the transmission. There's apparently a screw just disconnected. And I'm doing 65 miles an hour and I'm, I've got nothing. I've just got nothing. My big old coconut's just going, oh. So I, I, I pulled over, got out of that. Took me four hours to get serviced. But the crazy thing is they got there to service it, our own people, and uh, they realized that's all it was, was it was the, the shifter, I guess it's a nut, a nut assembly, the shifter nut assembly had come loose. And they said, our concern was when they'd heard that it, that happened, the concern was is that the, the nut had fallen off, you know, five miles back or wherever, two miles back, and that they'd have to drag it to the shop and get it fixed and ruin my whole day. Well, the, sh the little nut was still on top of the transmission. <laughs> but here's the worst part about it. It was 90 degrees yesterday here. And uh, when I pulled over, I was trying, I, I spent like two, three minutes trying, more than that actually, trying to you know get the transmission. Like I'm, I'm like, I must have done something wrong. Well, I was able to get the transmission thing to connect to something and it went into reverse. Well, then it just completely stopped. So now when that happens, I'm in reverse. So I can't let the truck idle because it wouldn't idle because it was in reverse and it was and it wouldn't wouldn't come out of gear so i had no i had no air conditioning for four hours that was that was pleasant that was like being back in the gulf war in tents um that's what that was like but the whole day was shot because of that the whole day was shot but you know what they came out literally i, I wonder about this too tanker monkey knows a lot about this kind of stuff i just wonder with an with you know the average owner op that didn't, like I've never had that happen with a personal vehicle or a, a, a tractor. Had I, had I, had we not had our own shop and our own service truck, imagine that bill. Like, cause you as a driver, I didn't know what to look for. And I'm not about to get under and start messing around with stuff. But imagine the average shop that pulls in one of these third party, you know, repair companies they come in and tow your tractor. That's all it is, it just needs a, a nut. Cause that's literally, the guys pulled up, they had it fixed in 10 minutes. Like, oh, the nut just fell off. Luckily we have the nut. We don't want to drag it all the way back to the, to the shop to get the nut. 
it was right on top of the transmission. So they just screwed it back in, works fine. I sat there for four hours waiting on that, but I wonder what that bill would have been for the average lease op owner op who's not mechanically inclined, doesn't do their own work, like Tanker Monkey would have crawled under the vehicle and fixed it. You know, uh, where uh, uh, the uh, the Wolverine would have crawled under the truck and fi figured it out and fixed it. That's not me, but that's all it was. Like they pulled up, they had the wrecker with them in case they needed to tow it. It was stuck in reverse. Within 10 minutes, they had the bolt put back on, they had it out of reverse, it's, it's working fine, it's beautiful craziest thing because that thing was just flopping around like a dead fish or I guess a partly dead fish because a partly dead fish would still be flopping a dead fish would be no there'd be no flop with the dead fish so that was yesterday ruined my whole day didn't get well I had enough sleep to be safe <laughs> as a driver but it was just a crappy way to spend four hours on the side of the road waiting for the truck and I was about to because I'm like maybe I did something wrong I was about to call and get my own tow truck just to get you know just to get things moving for my day because i hate when i have stuff like that disrupt my day but i'm like no no let me see what the company says let me see what they do 10 minutes 10 minutes 10 minutes once they got there to screw that nut back on probably maybe 20 to screw the nut back on get me back on the road you know but imagine what that bill would have been had you had a, a normal service truck come and hook up and tow you wherever they got to tow you to and then the shop that doesn't know you and all, their job with you is to make money tells you all the things that were wrong with it and why, you know, what happened. Because literally, literally, it, they, they pulled up and within 20 minutes I'm back on the road moving. Craziness. But it shot my whole day having to sweat for four hours like a pig. But that's the first thing. The second thing, the magic muzzle. I would just like to ask all the, re by the way, thank you guys for being here. Please walk over and smash the like or the dislike button with your Viking, your werewolf, or your bowling frog paw. I appreciate the eyeballs. I would like to know, not now, but in the comments down below. By the way, I passed out all the cash apps Sunday. Probably gave out 15, 20 cash apps. I tried to tried to uh, reward you folks that put your cash app in the comments down below the video. Try to pass out some Viking werewolf love. I bought one of the uh, places I pick. I bought the I bought the whole crew pizzas tonight because the lot jockeys that there's one of the places I pick is uh, this this is a small lot and we're super busy right now. We are super super busy. I can't even imagine when the rush hits for Christmas. I can't even imagine. And I, these lot jockeys are on it and they help me move trailers and cause I got to move trailers to get the stuff to pull it out. So you know. I give, I give I give more than I take. I try to nowadays because I'm, I'm very blessed and very thankful for how this this whole role out here is going, especially with this third story. I'm not going to be on here long, but I want to tell these three stories. First and foremost, the gear shift falling off. That was a beautiful thing. But I learned something. I learned something because again, I just wonder. I wonder what the average lease or owner op would have gone through had that just a third party company pulled up second party company hooked you up dragged it to their shop and all it was was a nut came loose which was crazy in itself but that's all it was versus a thousand three thousand dollar bill plus you know plus the tow bill and then the magic muzzle let me let me talk about that the magic muzzle let me talk about that i just want to know from the, the people that wear the muzzle i just want to know because one of the things that's happened with our company now is we can do everything via phone I don't need to walk into any terminal. I don't need to, other than travel centers, I don't need to be inside any place. I love that. Like I don't need to go in and have, and even have a rag over my face. All I do is put a rag over my face. I don't wear a muzzle. But I wanna know how a muzzle, to walk into a restaurant, you gotta have your muzzle to walk in and then to walk 10 or 15 feet to your table and then you can take your muzzle off. I just want to know how that magically works. I just want to know. Somebody somebody explain to me physiologically how that works. That that 10, 15 feet of you moving through a restaurant when there's people behind in the in the let's just they're back in the in the kitchen. They're cooking your food probably without gloves on. They may have a muzzle on, but their muzzle might have been on for the last 15, 12, 10, 8 hours and the muzzle's sweaty and it's got other germs in it. They're not switching out every time they make your food. You know, if they're wearing the muzzle, and you see so many people, I don't, I don't have a muzzle with me, but I, I, this is one of the rags I put over my face. But you see so many people that rather than doing this, 
by you know by halfway through the shift their muzzles down like this so they have their muzzle like this so their their mouth is a little bit open and their nose is a little bit open i just i just want to know how that works man i want to, somebody explain to me how that works how that's effective because I, I don't believe the magic muzzle theory i don't believe that so that's my question in the comments down below put your magic muzzle theory on how that works for that 10 15 feet walking into a restaurant and you can take it off and eat or walking into a plane and like rob o'neill he was eating that's what he said he took the mask off for on delta and then delta banned him and yet delta's own policy says when you're eating or drinking you can have your mask off but then they banned him because he put a picture on social media oh my gosh karen got involved from the corporate not, it's not probably not karen probably a ken at corporate because it was a dude i think it's, it's a dude ceo of delta anyway so those are the first two things. The third thing, the third thing. This week, this week, four days, and I only share this with you because mywebull.com, you get two free stocks for funding your account with $100. You don't need to buy. You're going to get two free stocks, fund your account, link a bank account, put 100 bucks in, two free stocks, and then my trader guru, you get one free stock over there just for linking your bank account. You don't even need to fund your account. But I made $500 off of FedEx stock this week because I've, I've been playing the FedEx and UPS game because their stock is just climbing. FedEx is going through the roof. The roof, the roof, the roof is on fire. But at four days, actually three days, 500 bucks, I did a call. I bought a call. And a call is you buy one, one, one call is 100 shares of stock. And I got a great movement in my direction because it's been going up. Man, if I would have put 10,000 bucks into FedEx four months ago, woo, would have been good. It's gone up $100 a share in the last four or five months. And it's still climbing. So anyway, I don't know why you guys are just holding on to a steering wheel. This month so far, I've made $1,500 profit. I've only lost 70 bucks in the last four and a half, five months trading. I, just this last two weeks, I've made 1500 bucks profit just on the stock market. And there's so many different ways. Start the two accounts, just start paying attention. One of the things I do every day is I go to finviz.com, F-I-N, Frank India November, Victor India Zebra, finviz.com. And I look at what the major movers are. I look at who's trading inside, inside trading. You know which which companies are having a lot of the CEOs buy their stock. You can see that, like the, the the chart they show you, and then I look at what's going on with the Standard and Poor 500. Okay, but then I look at the trends because all these mission essential companies are blowing the doors off right now. And I got me a little bit of FedEx love this week. I'm, I'm waiting on the UPS love because I bought a call for them too. But I'm waiting on them. But you, uh, FedEx went through the roof Monday morning. Just a tip. I don't trade the first hour when the market opens because it's very volatile. I don't trade during lunchtime, but I'm normally sleeping during lunchtime. But like I woke up that day, I had my call placed. I woke up to go to the bathroom. I always pop on and check the stock, see what's happening. Because I love, this is like addictive for me. I love making this money. And I popped on, I'm looking at my, at my account on my Weeble on the calls I had, and I saw that the call I put in was there. Like it was at the number I needed to be at to clear up. So I cleaned out, took, took my money, took my money. So I'm, I'm, up, I'm up doing business, personal business as it were, going to the bathroom. I check my stocks, I see that the FedEx showed me some love on the swing it did, because I don't day trade, I don't day trade. I, I don't have the time to sit in front of a computer. I sleep during the day. I get my Viking werewolf nap in. But I'm, I'm doing business and then I push a button and I sell my stock and I made 500 profit. Profit, profit, not like in profit. Thousand last week, 500 this week. And here's my, here's my reasoning on telling you guys this. Start learning how to do other things and hold a steering wheel. Use this as a base to build from. Use this as a base. Like the money I'm making is a great base. But I want to have other streams coming in. The stock market is so, and I know people are saying there's going to be this, you know, gangster reset coming up and blah, blah, blah. I get that. There's a lot of theories out there right now. I'm just making my money during all the theories. You know, a lot of people get scared during chaos. This chaos for me has been a really good, I've had a lot of good strategy to make my money. A lot of good strategy. What would 1500 bucks do for you? That's just in two weeks. 
you know, just in two weeks. And I've got a few more plays. I'm waiting to see how they go. I know that John Spano on Tactical Trader over on his channel, he does a lot of day trading with penny stocks. I'm doing mainly the big boys. And I'm, I, again, there's so many ways to make money. So again, when your gear shift falls out and you're on the side of the road like the Viking werewolf was yesterday with no air conditioning because I couldn't let the truck idle because it was stuck in reverse, that was just ironic that I'm, I'm, I'm fiddling with it once I pulled over and then I get it stuck in reverse and I couldn't idle it for that next four hours. I shot myself in the head. But I've never had that happen, but that's a good, think about that as, an, as a lease op. How much would that have cost you, you know? If you wouldn't have known like our mechanic did to get under the truck, check that, screwed the bolt back on, I was, I was back running. It was the craziest thing. He said, I've never seen a bolt just stay on top of the transmission. I said, you don't know my life, sir. You don't know my life. That's how I roll. Things work out for the Viking werewolf. And then the magic muzzle. Put down below the, 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 the vision you see for these magic muzzles, because none of this makes any sense to me. None of it. Other than control, other than control and compliance, you will be controlled, you will comply with our need to control. That's what I understand. That's what I understand. And then go make your money. Put the put my Weeble, put a hundred bucks in, just fund your account, let your money sit there, get two free stocks, and then my trader guru, you get one free stock just for opening an account and linking your bank account. You don't even need to fund it, you get one free stock. I don't know why you're not doing it. And then start paying attention. Because these mission essential companies. I could have cleaned up. I could have put 10 grand in FedEx. You know, 20, 2020 hindsight is a, it's a beautiful thing and it's a horrible thing. But I am learning so much. And right now, it's not a good time to be investing in real estate. It's not because they're, they're still going to extend the eviction moratorium, supposedly. So it's not a good time to be buying real estate as an investor. If you're buying it for yourself, it's still a sketchy time because I still think the market market's going to crash in three to six months. But the stock market. There's so many ways to make it coming and going. I'm going to get back to hauling and howling, hustle, intensity, focus, and respect. Please put your cash app down below. Put your understanding of the magic muzzle, okay? And please subscribe, like, comment, and share. Red Viking Werewolf Trucker, I am out.